The newest DLC brought us one of the craziest new Pokemon, Iron Boulder. This Paradox Robot Terrakion is an absolute monster for a few reasons. It's a rock and psychic type with wild stats at base 120 attack, solid special defense at 108, but most importantly, 124 speed, which makes it one of the fastest threats. It's also rocking a brand new signature move called Mighty Cleave. This is a 95 power rock move that bypasses Protect. Iron Boulder can take advantage of Swords Dance to boost offensive power, and with its already insane speed, this thing can become a massive threat quickly. Alright look, I am tired of people saying that this thing is based off of a boulder. It's a rock and the pioneers need to drive these babies for miles. What is happening? Today I have two absolutely insane matches showcasing the iron boulder. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright so, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Meowskarada. They likely expect me to lead with the Swampert, but I pulled the old Uno reverse on him and I decided to lead off with the Incineroar. So I start things off here with a nice little Intimidate and the type matchup. So. I'm actually in a pretty great spot predicting the Meowskarada lead, and at this point, I have a couple different options. I decide to go for the knockoff rather than to try to get some momentum with the parting shots, because I would really love to get the Gliscor's ass switching in and get rid of its Toxic Orb, you know, before it gets to use it. However, they actually decide to bring in the Hisui and Samurott. There's starters all over the damn place. I do get the knockoff for some nice little chip here, and at this point, I, I do want to conserve the Incineroar here. So, one of my best checks to this thing is going to be the Amoongus. I can bring this thing in. He's generally, he's just a fun guy. He wants to hang out and spread some spores around and you just overall do some Amoongus type shit. So I bring this in. I know that they likely want to click the Ceaseless Edge uh, to try to get some spikes up. However, they end up going for that Sacred Sword on the Incineroar here. And now they're going to take a little bit of chip from the Rocky Helmet. You, you know, we may be fun, but we're not that fun. Do not touch me. So... Here's the thing, I can click Spore, the only answer they have to switch in is going to be the Meowskarada. I predict them not to go into that because then I just have coverage, you know, with a Sludge Bomb, but instead, you know, they do just end up bringing back in the Kitty. And of course, this thing cannot be Spored, however, I'm kind of still in a beneficial matchup here, as I can hit him with a Sludge Bomb, it's going to do a whole lot of damage regardless of if they change their type anyway. But they actually end up going for the Copycat, I imagine... Like predicting a switch or something. Copycat on a switch is actually an interesting kind of interaction there. But, of course, they get the spore. It does not affect me because, you know, I'm a Moongus. However, the copycat tech does have the potential to go crazy. But I'm out here just throwing bombs. And that does a nice amount of damage to the Meowskarada here. So, I have no reason really to switch out at this point. As they're actually just going to stay in, go for that knockoff. And that's going to kind of solidify the fact that now Meowskarada is going to be taken out here. So that's a very high speed tier Mon and honestly a pretty big threat out of the way. I do lose my Rocky Helmet and I'm sitting at around half with the Amoongus, but this thing is literally so annoying that even when I switch out, I'm going to get some health back. So they now decide to bring in the Hydrapple on the Revenge Switch. I don't really want to stay in here. I can get some Regenerator and plus I do have a decent answer in going into the Hitmonchan. I know that I can sponge attacks from this thing and then I can kind of scare it with the threat of an Ice Punch. So I bring this in, they go for the Fickle Beam, and of course, they actually get the all-out attack, so that is insane damage. But Hitmonchan actually takes it relatively nicely. Never underestimate a dude in a skirt, because this natural special defense on this thing uh, does allow me to take that. So now I can fire off an Ice Punch, hope that they want to stay in here. But they're, of course, just going to bring in Alolan Ninetales, the bane of my existence, making it snow on the beach. It's the most evil thing I've ever heard of. I go for the Ice Punch, and yeah, of course, it just does nothing to this. So... I know that there's two things you can guarantee in this life, that is Focus Blast will miss and Alolan Ninetales will always click Aurora Veil as I'm just going to stay and go for a Drain Punch. They do go for that Aurora Veil there, the Drain Punch is going to do, yeah, pretty much nothing. This thing gets the defensive boost from the snow being up plus the Aurora Veil and this thing is just kind of a McAsshole. But I do want to try to conserve the Hitmonchan, you know, the Priority Mach Punch could come in handy later, it's also still good against the Hydrapple. And I do not really want to take a Moonblast for pretty much no payoff and getting like nothing with a Drain Punch. So I decide to bring in Chester Cheeto and I can scare this thing, but it doesn't really matter because they're now going to straight up throw the damn moon at me. And I'm specially defensive though, so I can actually take a nice little neutral hit here. And at this point, I decide to predict a switch. I know that this thing does not want to stay in here. I can go for the parting shot, get myself a matchup, which means momentum, and then try to get something going here. However, they decide to bring in the Gliscor. I really wish that I would have clicked the knockoff here because it's just hilarious getting rid of Toxic Orb. But uh, the parting shot is actually still pretty nice. Now, I imagine this thing is here to, you know, kind of just set up some hazards in form of Stealth Rock and Spikes. So I figure I can try to take advantage of this, go into Swampert, either set up my own Stealth Rock here, and also, you know, kind of threaten this thing out with the decent attacks against it. So 
They do get their poison, of course, Glyscore just being evil, looking menacing over there with his big meaty claws. And I do want to set up the Stealth Rock. It's going to try to punish these switches, and Glyscore wants nothing to do, you know, against the Swampert, especially at minus one attack. You know, an Earthquake is going to do pretty much nothing. And now they can go into the Hydrapple, who, of course, does have Regenerator, comes in at full health, and... This thing is extremely scary. There's always the threat of that massive power fickle beam coming through. Uh, but regardless, Energy Ball still is going to be able to do a lot. Now, my best and kind of only defensive answer is going to be the Incineroar here. The Hitmonchan has taken too much damage, and I don't want to risk, obviously, bringing that thing in. But Chester can come in and hopefully take an Energy Ball super nicely um, and kind of stir some shit up here. So, we come in, we're ready to wrestle, and they actually predict the switch. They go for the Hydro Pump and connect. So, you know, that's... Kind of ridiculous. Luckily, I'm especially defensive, which does allow me to take it. However, they are in fact actually faster. That apple gets going quick as hell, and an earth power just takes care of the Incineroar. So, that is not ideal. Incineroar was a great kind of switch in for me. However, I'm running out of options a little bit against the apple, but at least now I can bring in the Hitmonchan here and try to make some plays. So, here's the thing they know that I have the Ice Punch for coverage here. But it's kind of the only real thing that I can click at this point. So I am just going to go for that Ice Punch to see what they want to do, how they want to handle it. They do end up switching out, and they're going to bring in another new DLC 2 Pokemon, and that is going to be the Archaladon. I say, please, sir, I actually do not need any staples removed today. Thank you very much. Uh, but it comes in, takes an Ice Punch, pretty much no problem, because, you know, he's like defensive as shit. He also gets the stamina, so that gives him a defense boost. And a lot of the time, these things are going to be carrying the body press. I just decide to go for the Mach Punch. Uh, just to guarantee a little bit more chip before I go down here. But I plan on hitting this thing in the special side anyway. So the stamina boost, they aren't really scaring me. Now here's why. They do finish me off with that body press. But again, I don't have a whole lot of defensive switch-ins to this. And now the Aurora Veil does actually wear off. So here's what I can do. I can go into the Petra run because he can't go for the body press. And then has to kind of see what other coverage they're working with. But then I'm kind of actually free to set up a nasty plot here. So we're going to try to get the old Petra run going. I'm going to go for the nasty plot. I do actually go first here, so I get that plus two in special attack, and I'm considering if I want to commit the ground terror here for the Terra Blast, but they are actually going to reveal that they have the damage with the Draco Meteor, so that does a whole lot. I'm not specially defensive. This Peach is physically defensive as tits, but on the special side, we're not looking great. So at this amount of health, I don't want to really commit the ground terror, but what I can do is go for the Hex, and it should do just enough damage to the point where I can pick this thing off later. So... Again, I don't really want to commit the Terra. If I go for Terra Ground, I kill with the Terra Blast, but then they just revenge kill me. And the Terra is super valuable late game. However, I actually, I end up living another Draco Meteor at 3 HP, which is kind of insane. It allows me to fire off another Hex here, and that takes care of the huge threat that is going to be the Archaladon. So our staples are now stuck forever, and they now get a free switch into whatever they like, which does actually end up being the Samurai. So after some Stealth Rock Chip, it's actually sitting at around half HP. And that is actually, it's pretty nice. It is going to be able to outspeed me. Knocks me out with the Aqua Jet, which is actually kind of nice to see the priority at that point. But, you know, down goes the Petra Runt. But this scenario actually puts me in a spot where I figure out my win condition. And that comes in the form of this Boulder. I'm going to bring in the Iron Boulder at this point. I can come in with my insane speed, I actually also get a booster energy, which does boost my speed. So I'm now faster than everything on the field, especially even if they have a choice scarf. And this thing, this thing is rolling quick as shit. So now they do have the super effective hit with both the priority in the Aqua Jet and also probably an Aqua Cutter. So what I decide to do is I'm actually going to go for the Terra Flying. Now that's going to allow me to guarantee that I can take a hit. And being faster than everything, this is going to set me up in a spot where I can go for a free Swords Dance. And listen, once the boulder starts getting sharp, it is over for these hoes. So, they are going to go for the Aqua Jet, I guess, just to try to grab some damage here. But I take it nicely, and then I fire off a nice little Swords Dance. I'm sharp, and I have balloons, which is kind of a ridiculous damn combo. These balloons would pop expediously. But, now, I'm kind of fully set up here. I can then go for a Mighty Cleave. They don't want to go for that Aqua Jet. They know it's not going to kill. Uh, but a Mighty Cleave at plus two, obviously going to take care of the Samurott. And listen, Iron Boulder is one of the craziest late game sweepers because they're running low on options here on the amount of chip that I've got on their team. And the one defensive option they do have is going to be this Gliscor. However, I'm not weak to the Earthquake anymore, and I know that this thing doesn't have much that it can hit me with. So I'm actually just going to go for another Sword Stance. What that's going to do is guarantee that next turn a Mighty Cleave is going to be able to knock it out. And they do not have any offensive options here as they decide to go for the Sword Stance themselves. So at this point in time, the battlefield is looking insanely sharp. They also get the poison heal, which does bring it back to full HP. And I can now just go for that Mighty Cleave. With two Swords Dances up, a Stab Mighty Cleave, 
um, is going to absolutely destroy the Gliscor, and down goes one of the biggest threats. So we've effectively set this thing up to the point where there's almost there's no return. But they can bring in the Hydrapple, who doesn't even have a bite taken out of his ass. This thing is still at full HP, but the Iron Boulder just basically says you can regenerate these hands, because a Mighty Cleave still does kill here. However, they do actually have the late game Terra of their own, and it is going to be a defensive Terra for the Hydrapple turning into the Steel type. So they get the Axe on their head, and now they do resist the Mighty Cleave. And it comes down to the point where can Flying type Iron Boulder uh, take an attack from this thing? I'm feeling like yes, but I go for that Mighty Cleave, doesn't quite knock it out. It then fires off a Fickle Beam. They luckily do not get the all-out attack. I am able to take it because we got a little bit of bulk on our side. And then an Earthquake can finish this thing off. However, they're actually going to switch that thing out. Again, because of the regenerator ability, they're going to grab a nice little chunk of health back when they come back in. Uh, and this does allow the Alola Ninetales to come in. So luckily, there will be no Aurora Veil shenanigans on my watch because an Earthquake does just knock this thing out. The snow is essentially up for no reason, but it does allow the Hydrapple... Uh, to try to make something late game happen. So the final mon is going to be the Apple. I really want to see this damn thing dead uh, because it has been a threat the entire match and it's making use of that Terra. However, I do have the coverage with the Earthquake. It comes in and with two Swords Dances up, that Apple is going to turn into a nice little Apple Pie. So that's going to finish it off and that is going to be the end of the game. The late game Iron Boulder is actually the truth. This thing is extremely scary, especially with that Mighty Cleave Stab and all the coverage it's got. It is a, a very fun month. So that's going to be the end of the game there. The boulder, clutch as hell, feeling sharp, feeling good. And also, this is going to bring us into the second match because we're not done with the iron boulder fun yet. So this matchup here is particularly scary for me. You know, they have the Paradox Mons in the form of the Valiant. They have a boulder of their own. They have the Great Tusk, Defensive Corviknight. There's very scary stuff along with the threat of the Aurora Veil. Uh, and overall, it's a really good game, so let's get into it. All right, so once again, my opponent is going to predict the Swampert to lead, and they're actually just going to go Meowskarada. It's actually still just a solid lead regardless, because you can get a fast pivot. Meowskarada is just kind of annoying. But I Uno reverse number two, and we toss out the Amoongus this time. So they're, of course, going to get the hell out of here. They go for that U-turn, turn into the bug type first, do a little bit of chip damage to me, but of course, I do actually get that Rocky Helmet. So they do have a couple different options that they can bring in here. I decided to play it safe and go for the, the damage with the Sludge Bomb. However... They, of course, bring in Metal Bird, Asshole, the freaking Corviknight, and obviously Sludge Bomb. It's not going to really help here. But Amoongus is still, this is why I'm not worried about this play, because I'm actually still in a decent spot. Uh, I know that I can take an attack from this thing, and then I can go for the Spore, where they actually revealed that they're going to be bulk up Corviknight, which is even scarier than just regular old Corviknight, because now this thing has the potential uh, to really get some damage going. But I do, of course, land the guaranteed Spore, and I say no more bulking for you, sir. It is nap time. So... I now need to take advantage of these sleep turns because Corviknight, with an attack and defense boost, is a bit of a threat. So, I decide to bring in the Incineroar. Now, again, this is a mixed Incineroar where I have the option to click that overheat. I can go for things like knockoff. Uh, and in general, I do handle this thing at least relatively nicely. So, they do burn their guaranteed turn of sleep here. And at this point, I do want to just go for that overheat because, again, this is... A massive threat, and I'm just going to try to address it immediately. So I go for that overheat. They're going to end up switching out into Great Tusk. So it's just threat after threat out here. The Tusk comes in, and this is why I love mixed attacking Incineroar. I can go for an overheat and get massive damage. I do over half to the Great Tusk, and then still I do have you know offensive options uh, on the physical side. However, I'm going to go ahead and bank on the fact that they want to set up Stealth Rock here. And so what I'm going to do is go for the Parting Shot. So they do actually end up setting up the Stealth Rock, which is great. Uh, and at this point, with this thing, is his attack power dampened, I can try to get something going here. And I do have a couple different options. So, Parting Shot is a great pivot, because now Tusk is no longer that big of a threat. Plus, I do have the super defensive fucking Petra Berry in the back. With the Air Balloon, knowing they can't Earthquake me, I can try to get this thing going. So, I'm going to bring in Peaches and see, you know, what, what can happen here. So, the combination of this thing having the dropped attack... With my air balloon, knowing I can't be earthquaked, and my crazy defensive stat, I'm actually in a great spot here uh, to try to set up. So Great Tusk is over half health, and I don't have a lot of you know answers to it in the form of just the Petra Berry, but I can go for a nasty plot and try to get Buddy going. They are going to end up switching out here because they don't like the matchup, and they're going to end up bringing back in the Core of Night, who does in fact like the matchup because obviously I can't go for the Poison-type Malignant Chain. Uh, but this thing comes in. He is sleeping. He's got some even pressure 
while he's sleeping. But this allows me to get up that free nasty plot. So now we're looking pretty damn scary. And I do actually have a good answer in the hex. Now with them being asleep, counts as a status condition, I'm able to do well over half. But of course, they do in fact wake up and just go right for a bulk up. Uh, and that's why I wanted to try to get the berry going, because knowing that this thing was a defensive answer, it being asleep kind of makes it vulnerable to the hex. But yeah, things like that. With the early wake, it's now going to be in a spot where a hex without a status condition is not quite going to knock it out. So I just decided to go for another hex here at this point. Um, again, it doesn't quite do it for me, and this allows it to set up a roost. So we kind of have an interesting matchup here. This thing does have a bulk up. It's at a pretty solid amount of HP. However, I have a nasty plot and I have enough natural kind of defenses to where I know that I can take things like a brave bird relatively easy. So I'm actually just going to go for another nasty plot and I'm like, all right, fine. The berry, the berry's ready out here. We're thinking all sorts of nasty, crazy bullshit and they just go for another roost because Corviknight is just, that's the kind of dude Corviknight is. Just roosting, being bulky and overall annoying. But after another nasty plot, Hex should be a two hit KO here. And I know that I can take an attack so I can just raw dog a hex here without a status condition and it does about half as now they just decide to bulk up once more and unfortunately after the leftovers recovery it's gonna look like this thing is gonna be able to take one more so Corviknight is annoying just flapping his stupid wings over there being bulky and even even extra bulky with the bulk up so I just decide fuck I'm this deep at this point I'm just gonna keep on firing off hexes it doesn't quite knock it out, but this allows them to go for the Brave Bird, and even with two bulk ups, I'm able to take it extremely nicely. Now they do pop my balloon, but the recoil takes care of the Corviknight, and that is going to open up the game a bit, especially for the Iron Boulder in the back, which is what I'm kind of working toward in a late game here. So, now they get a free Revenge Switch, and of course they go into Alola Ninetales, because everybody be using freaking Alola Ninetales, and you already know they're going to click Aurora Veil, which they get the free Reflect and Light Screen with the Light Clay, that is going to dampen my offenses for the next eight turns. But I am able to fire off a Malignant Chain. And even through the Aurora Veil, that is easily going to take this thing out. Because I have two nasty plots. So the Petra Berry is still stirring shit up out here. And down goes the Ninetales, which is great to see. But my nemesis, the Great Tusk, is able to come back in behind an Aurora Veil. I am actually faster. I can fire off a Malignant Chain here and hope for the poison. It's a 50% chance. I unfortunately do not get it. That allows them to fire off the EQ and down goes the peaches. So, I'm in a little bit of a weird spot here, with, especially with that Aurora Veil being up. And while I do want to get the Iron Boulder kind of getting started now, I know that, especially with Aurora Veil, I, I should probably take my time a little bit here, as I do have a lot of options. So, here's what we're gonna do. I decide to go into the Swampert. Now, Swampert is a Mon that can take attacks from this thing all day. I can either set up my Stealth Rock, try to get some flip turns going, or just some general damage. Now, I do want to go for the flip turn here. I figure they're definitely gonna switch out here and I'm just going to get some momentum. If they stay in, it likely, it does maybe enough to knock out the, the, the Tusk, but they actually just end up switching into Meowskarada as they do want kind of the, the matchup here. But I say, nope, my ass is out of here. I just decide to hit him with the old water type U-turn, and we huck a Yui and we are out. So, Meowskarada is about fast as hell. The one thing it is not faster than, though, is these hands, because I can bring in the Hitmonchan, and with the Mach Punch, I'm able to hit this thing for super effective damage before it's going to be able to change its type. So, I'm just going to go directly for that Mach Punch, but of course with the Aurora Veil up, we're not quite able to grab a knockout here, but I do get some meaningful damage, and they decide to just go for the U-turn here. Transform into the Bug type once again. Hitmonchan takes a critical hit pretty relatively nicely, uh, and now they can kind of bring in a better answer against the Hitmonchan, which is going to be one of the scariest things, the Iron Valiant. There's just threat after threat out here, and this thing has potential uh, to be one of the worst of them. It does get its Quark Drive to boost its speed, so now... Buddy is running quick as hell, and I am a bit frightened here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decide to go into the Incineroar. Now, I figure they probably try to go for some type of setup. The bad thing is I don't know if it's going to be physical or special at this point, but I bring in an Incineroar because I figure uh, this thing does have a, defend a decent matchup where I get the Intimidate, and it does actually end up being Swords Dance. So after the Intimidate, they're now sitting at just plus one with that Swords Dance. Uh, the Aurora Veil is still sticking around, but I do just want to click Overheat to get as much damage as possible. Now, it's hopeful thinking because a close combat does just beat the shit out of my cat, uh, and that is not great. They do get the defensive drops here, uh, but uh, Incineroar going down is not ideal. But I do have the win condition in the back, which comes in the form of the Iron Boulder. However, it's not quite time yet. I do want to ensure that that can kind of seal the deal for me. So first, 
I actually just decide to go into the Amoongus. I figure I actually have a solid matchup here as I'm defensive. I can take an attack, put it to sleep with a Spore, and really help me out here. However, they have different plans, as they're actually going to end up going for that Terra, and I'm thinking, oh Jesus, they have coverage against the Amoongus, which is not great, because this is kind of the only thing that can take an attack here. They end up going for the Terra Fire, puts the candles on its head, and that means that they do have the Stab Fire Punch, um, and that is just going to absolutely roast and toast the Shrooms, and uh, not in a good way, as that does take care of me, and they do take a little bit of Rocky Helmet at least. But forcing them to go for that Terra is not actually the end of the world and actually puts me in a decent spot because now Boulder can come in and I am actually naturally faster than this thing. Now keep in mind they do have a booster energy uh, to plus one their speed. However, Boulder does as well. Pioneer comes in. Uh, I'm going to pop my own booster energy and I do have a couple base points of speed higher than this thing. So after that boost, I am actually going to be faster here. And then I threaten the hell out of it with a Mighty Cleave now that it's fire type. But then I'm thinking, hold on, he actually does in fact have one turn of Aurora Veil. Except they did commit the close combat. So at minus one defense, I'm still confident uh, that a Mighty Cleave should be able to take this thing out. I do outspeed because this boulder is quick as shit. I'm able to take care of the Valiant. And that is actually huge because that thing was a massive threat. Plus they committed the Terra now. So the boulder is now sitting in a pretty decent spot. So... Aurora Veil is going to wear off, which is amazing, because now is exactly when I need the most damage possible. And they are going to end up going into Meowskarada. Again, quickest kitty in all the land, except not faster than my shiny rock, because of that booster energy speed, plus this thing is just quick as hell. I can outspeed, go for that Mighty Cleave. It has been chipped down to the point where that is easily going to take care of it. Down goes the Meowskarada, and again, the late game Iron Boulder is looking quite promising, because I also have solid chip damage on the Great Tusk, and we have the stab coverage with the Zen Headbutt. I can outspeed, hit him with my forehead, down goes the Tusk. And we are just out here bringing the game back from the dead. Because Boulder, that's what this thing does. Now, they also have, happen to have a Boulder of their own. And it's kind of like that Spider-Man meme. As it comes in, it actually is Quark Drive. And it's also going to get a speed boost. So at this moment in time, we are both sitting at the exact same amount of speed. Which results in a speed tie. And it's kind of just a 50% chance if I go first. But I still do have the Terra in the back pocket, and this actually works out extremely nicely because with that Terra flying, I know that their coverage is going to be clicking Earthquake. They're kind of forced to go for the Earthquake for the max amount of damage possible. So I instead am just going to put the balloons on my head, float a little bit above the ground as they are faster. They go for that Earthquake, it does not affect me, and then I can just fire off an Earthquake of my own. And without a Swords Dance, it's actually not quite going to be able to take care of this thing. And now, being weak to a Rock-type attack, I'm going to just roll the chance to go first. I do, in fact, win the Speed Tie this time, and an Earthquake does take care of the Boulder, and effectively is going to save me the game. So, little Iron Boulder on Iron Boulder action. Again, this thing is extremely clutch, if used correctly, and honestly, a pretty wild mod. Let me know what you guys thought. If you enjoyed the battle, make sure to click that Like button. I really do appreciate all the support, and I will catch you next time.